Okay, here we go. We have one of the most successful male models of all time. <laughs> Tyson Beckford, welcome to Vlad TV. What's up, homeboy? <laughs> Good to see you, bro. You know, we, we used to live by each other. Like, yes, we back did. in Jersey, back in the day, we used to always run into each other. Yes, oh, yes. Man. So we go back. Yes, we, we do, back. sir. Before before and all of this, when I was still in my heyday of fashion. Of That's right. Yeah. You know, so we're finally getting to sit down and do it. Yeah, first about time, time ever, bro. <laughs> about time. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. This is That's our first up. time sitting down, so I want to start in the very beginning. Okay. So you were born in Rochester. No, this rumor has been spreading like wildfire. I was born in the Bronx. I went to ah. school as a teenager in Rochester, and that's where the confusion is. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's it's a crazy confusion. I don't know how it is, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It is so I'm a Bronx is. kid. Okay. You're a Bronx kid. Yeah. And you have a very interesting background in terms of your nationality. Yes. Uh, I'm Jamaican, Panamanian, Chinese, Portuguese, Spaniard, and then Dutch as well. <laughs> so I'm all kind of mixed up. Okay. And I guess at one point, your family actually moved you back to Jamaica? Yeah. When I was uh, uh, six months old, I moved back. Uh, my mom moved us back to Jamaica. Uh, and then I grew up there until I was about seven, then came back to uh, the U.S., then and that was that was like culture shock for me because you know I I, I thought I was an island boy, you know, gr growing up there in Jamaica, no sh no shirt, no shoes, you know, just just living off of the you know the mango trees and all of that. And then you know it was it was a shock when I saw snow. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I bet. And you're actually from a family of seven. Yes, yes, yes. There's a there's a ton of us in the family. Okay, and you actually described yourself as the black sheep of the family, the wild one. Yeah, I, I I was considered the black sheep of the family only because I like I was like the daredevil. I used to uh, like set up jumps in, in on the sidewalk in front of the house and take my um, take my my bike and just jump over stuff like trash can, dogs, cats, anything that would hold still for me to jump over. I would even jump over some of my friends, but none of my siblings would let me jump over them. And then I got into the dirt bikes and, you know, and then that my craze for motorcycles started, you know, and then it just to this day I'm still I'm still always doing that. Like the other day I was just doing donuts in front of the barbershop, you know, <laughs> in my homeboys uh uh Daytona. <laughs> so he he didn't like that too much cuz I killed his tires. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So you come back to Rochester, you go to high school there. Uh huh. And, um, you know, you mentioned some of your interviews that the kids actually used to make fun of you in terms of how you look. Yeah. I was teased a lot in, in school growing up because, you know, I had a, I had a, uh, when, when I first got from Jamaica, I had this huge afro. You know, the afro was in at the time. And, you know, uh, I was very, I had a very thick uh, Jamaican accent. And, you know, the kids used to just make fun of me and call me Boat Boy, Coconut, all kind of names. You know what I mean? You know how kids are. But, like, it helped me because it definitely made me uh, tougher and, 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 you know, thick-skinned, you know? Well, I guess the kids actually used to call you Mr. Chin. Yeah, Mr. Chin, because, I, you know, every time I smile, you couldn't see my eyes. So they made fun of me. And then they used to see me with my grandmother like walking up and down Boston Road in the Bronx and be like, yo, why are you always with that Chinese lady? And I'm like, yo, that's my grandmother, son. And they were like, no way. They were like, okay, that explains the eyes. And and as people got to know me better, they realized, you know, my ethnic background and, you know, and then, you know, we we're like, I don't, I wouldn't say we we're like first generation to come to America from uh, Jamaica, but we were, we were a part of that big Jamaican wave that came in in the, in the, in the late 70s.